Welcome to the Manner for the Soul podcast. I'm Greg Ledbetter, and I'm glad that you joined us as we have opportunity to feed our soul with God's Word. In the book of James, James begins discussing one of the most difficult challenges that we face as we transition from worldliness to Christianity, and that is controlling our tongue. Today in our podcast, I want us to look at what it means to control our tongue. And hopefully there's something that is said today that will help encourage you if you are struggling with, with what you say. You know, having our tongue under control is a mark of Christian maturity. In James chapter 3, verses 5 through 10, James talks about the controlling of our tongue. He talks about in James chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, this small organ, our tongue, that has the potential to do great things and it has the potential to do evil things as well. In James 3, 5 and 6, he says, So also the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity, the tongue is set among our members as which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life, and it is set on fire by hell. Then he goes on talking about taming the tongue and, and how taming this tongue is a problem that every one of us face. James chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, he says, For every species of beast and bird, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a relentless evil and a full of deadly poison. And, you know, even as we make progress and gaining control of our tongue, we are, have this great difficulty of being consistent. James chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, he says, With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. I want us to observe for our time three things about usage of our tongue. One, God requires that we eliminate some things from our vocabulary. Two, God requires that we add some things to our conversation. And three, God requires that we consistently use pure speech. First, God has forbidden certain kinds of speech. He asks us to eliminate some things from our vocabulary. God forbids speaking evil or slanderously of another person. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, he says, Let all bitterness and wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you, along with all malice. And God also forbids that we use curse words, swearing. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. And just so you know, anger does not give us an excuse to use bad language. God forbids dishonest speech. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9. Do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices. Put on the new self who is being renewed. We have to be careful as disciples of Christ, as the ones who are called out his, his special people, that our speech be seasoned with salt. You know, salt saves, salt preserves. So not only has he asked us to remove some things from our vocabulary, but God requires that we add some things to our conversation. For all those who follow Christ, we have to tell others the good news of salvation. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, 
And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. But it's embarrassing to tell people the gospel. Sometimes they just don't want to hear it. And you are right. There are those who do not want to hear the gospel. But we're not here to decide who's going to listen and who is not. God just says, speak. We are not to be ashamed of his words. We are not to be ashamed of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 9, verse 26, he says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory. We have to be willing to share what we know about God and Christ. So not only has God asked us to remove some things from our speech, not only has God required us to add some things to our conversation, but God requires, number three, that his followers consistently use pure speech. Let's go back to James chapter 3, and I want us to look at verses 9 through 12. With it we bless our Lord and Father. With it we curse men, who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Does a fountain send forth from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt produce fresh. What he's telling us is it's impossible. It's impossible for us to speak good and evil from the same mouth. We cannot speak evil and expect good to come forth. For an example, and maybe this is an extreme case, but I think we can identify with this in some ways. Sunday morning service is over with. Our friends come to us and we decide that we're going to go eat at a local restaurant. We sit down to eat. We began talking about worship service and before you know it, our conversation turns to all the things that we disliked about services that morning. The preacher was long-winded. If we have to sing Amazing Grace one more time, man, that song is from the 1980s. Can't we just find something a little bit newer? Did you see what Susie was wearing? And then you continue. We finish our meal. We turn to invite the people behind us to our gospel meeting that we're having. Their reply, after hearing how much you hate your church, why would we ever want to go there? And that is a good question. Why, if we don't like it, would they enjoy it? We have to be careful what we say because someone is always listening. Our words have much greater significance than we tend to place on them sometimes. Words are significant because they manifest the heart of the speaker. Deceptive words reflect the deceptive heart, and God sees it. Profane words reflect the profane heart, and God sees the speaker's heart. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 and 35, it says, You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out for that which the heart feels. The good man brings out his good treasure, what is good. Evil man brings out of his evil treasure, what is evil. So the key to making our speech consistently pure is to make our hearts pure. You see, the, the closer we walk, 
with God, the further we get away from the world. In James chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. It is my prayer that we work diligently to tame our tongues so that we do not bring reproach on ourselves. If there's anything that we can help you with, we ask that you contact us at the North Brandon Church of Christ in Brandon, Mississippi. We ask that you check our Facebook and YouTube pages for more content. We live stream all of our services, so why don't you check us out sometime? And next time, have a blessed day.